You know, there's some days that I wish I would have paid attention in physics class. <laughs> But with a little research and some AI, I was able to figure it out. I think I've mastered magnets. Let me show you how. Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. And today we're getting into the magnetic pull of 3D printing. So maybe you've been where I'm at or just recently was where your prints weren't holding together the way you wanted when you were using magnets. And I found that I was having the exact same problem with this guy here, the hot mic product that I just recently released. Magnets are great for modular prints, quick attachments, swappable parts, and satisfying clicks. But they're weird, or at least they behave not exactly the way you always expect them to. Sometimes they're too strong. They're so strong you can't pull it off of a piece of metal. Sometimes they're so weak you wonder why you even have a magnet to begin with. Just grabbing a magnet off of Amazon and slapping it into a design almost never gives you the hold strength you expect. I found that out so many times. And the problem really comes into pull force. It's not about just the magnet size. It's about the surface area. It's about your contact material and this thing called air gap, even tiny ones. Finally, the distance from the pull axis. Now, when I designed this, the original hot mic, I used smaller eight millimeter magnets, kind of like what you see here. Now this kind of worked, but as you can see, if you put it on there and you have somebody like me that's talking with their hands a lot, it comes off. And if for me, I, you know, I can just kind of recover. I can hit the pause button, but if you're live streaming, and that just goes flying off. Not only does it look unprofessional, it's kind of egg on my face because I sold them a product that didn't stick, clearly. It didn't work the way it was supposed to. Not a great first impression. So I realized that there were a couple of problems in the early units that I sent out, and I wanted to correct those right away. So let's take a look and see what happened. Here's the current design for the coupler. You can see here, I got my four pins. That's my locator pins. And then I've got, it basically what looks like just a disc, but embedded inside the disc is a recess portion. It's a cavity that has an area for my eight millimeter by two millimeter magnet. So I can see here, if I go down about a half millimeter, I expose that cavity and that's where the magnet would go. So there's at least a half millimeter air gap that exists in the current soon to be old design. Now let's take a look at the new design. Here you can see a couple of things. I'll get, I'll cover the coupler geometry in a future episode, but I want to talk about, notice now the magnet is a, the cavity is larger. This is now a 12.7 millimeter or inch in, or half inch opening. And there is no air gap. This thing sits flush. It's exactly 3.2 millimeters. So I don't have to worry about printing over it and any kind of stringing issues that may happen. And of course, there is no air gap. So that's ultimately what we want to go for. Keep in mind that air gap really refers to any distance between two magnets who are not in direct contact. The old design was about one to one and a half millimeters, and that was simply too much. So by removing this air gap, the resulting difference was night and day. The pull force feels at least two to three times stronger, and the plate stays rock solid. So to prove it wasn't just in my head, I decided to create a few print samples with no air gaps. The only difference between them is different magnet sizes, and one is a steel plate versus a magnet. Let's take a look at those. As you can see down here, move that guy out of the way, I've got half inch or 12.7 millimeter magnet. I've also got my eight millimeter magnet, and then this is my 10 millimeter steel plate. As you may recall, with the current design, being fully embedded, there is a gap. And these are two magnets. 
and the pull force is, is decent. It's not bad. Now, again, this is the revised design. It's not the old design that I just demonstrated. This is the revised design. So this should be stronger, and it is, which is good. But there are some surface imperfections here that I'm not a big fan of, you can see. And that's the the reason for that is that there is no way for the the hot plastic to really adhere to the metal. I can, I'm just not going to mess around with that. Instead, I decided to go with this version. Now let's let's take a look. So these are the two magnets. So we'll just do a coupling of them, and you can see they have a better pull force. Essentially, it's the exact same thing as this, but with no air gap and the result is distinct. It's very distinct. This is much harder to pull these two apart. So this is ideal, except there's one issue and I'll get to that in a second. Take these two. So as expected with the air gap gone, all the tests resulted in a much stronger bond. There's a clear case of why function takes precedence over form, but there is a reason why I prefer the metal plate to magnet solution versus the magnet to magnet solution. Let me explain. With magnet to magnet, you have the issue of poles, which means that they naturally will push apart yeah, like that when the poles are the same. Under normal circumstances, if you account for that, you should be fine. The problem is we're a small manufacturing business. We don't really have a way to standardize this at this point to know, have a consistent pull for every single magnet that goes out the door. Whereas with the steel plate, take this guy, move it. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter where it is. It's going to stick, right? So that is something that is incredibly important when it comes to designing for something is consistency. If I were to sell a customer a brand new logo down the road using the magnet to magnet solution and the poles did not match up with the bracket that they already had on their microphone, it's gonna repel. And that's not the intended desired result. And this is another reason why I'm gonna change that. So that's something to consider when you're designing for magnets as well. Be careful of the poles. And if you can get away with using a ferrous metal like a steel, you'll get much better results. And then it doesn't matter which way the magnet is inserted into the product. So I wanted a better way to plan magnet choice without constantly trial and error printing, sourcing magnets, returning magnets, so on and so forth. The trade-off is, if I don't want to worry about the poles, then I would go with the steel plate and the stronger magnet, the half inch magnet. I think that's probably my best choice, although I will do some in product testing. I use ChatGPT to build a simple app that calculates estimated pull force based on magnet diameter, thickness, air gap, and material contact. It uses interpolated data based on real world data, not just theoretical values. So here's the app copied and pasted into Xcode. I built this with one prompt in ChatGPT. Let me give you a quick demo of how this works. Now, as I said, I, we're gonna go into Xcode here and right inside the content view container, we're going to paste the code word for word directly into Xcode and then simply click the play button, which builds our app. And here it is. So I call it the MagForce estimator. I don't know. It could be called anything. You can see here, magnet diameter, magnet thickness, target, which is either a magnet or a steel plate diameter and target thickness. And then finally air gap. This is gonna be your critical, air gap is gonna be the critical number here. So as I mentioned, I'm using a half inch magnet. So I'm gonna put in 0.5 inches. Notice that the app automatically converts that to metric for me. 
and we're going to do magnet thickness of 0.125 inches. And then our target diameter is 10 millimeters by one millimeter with no air gap. And we're going to go to steel and I want that data output in pounds. So let's calculate the pull force. And right here you can see 6.3 pounds. Now the magnet itself is rated for 8.9 pounds. So it's dropping a bit, it's dropping by two pounds with the steel. However, what the part that is the most critical here is this graph. Notice how the air gap fall off is significant. The further you get away in millimeters from your contact to the magnet, look how quickly your pull force drops. It's kind of nuts. So when I plug this data in, that was, I mean, this was almost like no brainer for me. I immediately said, okay, no air gap because that takes away from the pull force. And why are you going to buy a more expensive magnet to have its pull force reduced for aesthetic purposes? And you may not notice, or maybe you did notice, you can't see the magnets. When this thing's in use, you can't see the magnets. So it doesn't matter if the magnets are showing or not. So I thought, okay, that's not, this is not a valid way to think about this. And this data that you get directly from the app tells me exactly what I need to know. And you can, you can play around with these numbers. If you go with, say, if I went with a, a one inch magnet, calculate the pull force, that's a significant increase. But if I put in a two millimeter gap, Look how that drops from 17 to a little bit more than a half a pound of pull force. We do kilos here too, just in case. Two millimeters. Put that back to zero. Seven kilos or almost eight kilos or 17, a little over 17 pounds. So that's, that's substantial. And that's enough for me to go, okay, air gap, gone. Absolutely gone. Just to recap, air gap, it kills the magnetic strength. You want flush contact that gives you the strongest hold. And then finally test before the final print. And clearly I'm not a coder. I had chat GPT write this code for me and it helped me make the decisions very quickly. And now all my future revisions of the hot mic are going to be based on a zero air gap for the maximum magnet strength. There won't be any wiggle, won't be things getting knocked off, basically a lot less hassle and still have the flexibility of being able to pop this guy off with a little bit more force, a little bit more intention, and then replace it with another design. You know, honestly, getting this right has made a huge difference in how confident I am shipping these to customers. So if you're designing anything magnetic, nameplates, tool holders, modular gear, please take air gap seriously. <laughs> Try the calculator play with some test prints and build smarter from the start. So you're not spending as much money as I did just to find the right magnets. And also make sure to check in the description for the prompt to make your own pull force calculator. And if this helped you out, hit like, subscribe, and let me know how you're using magnets in your own designs and what kinds of challenges did you have and how did you overcome them? Be great to know. Okay, that's it for this installment gang. I'll catch you in the next one. In the meantime, check out YouTube's recommended video, which should be right up here at some point. And remember, at the end of the day, we're all 3D printers. See ya.